Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use floating groups in your Bubble app. And floating groups are kind of a nice way to have either a header um, banner on the top of your app, so you can put a menu on there, um, then the title or the name of your app, and so forth. But there's some other things that you can do with it also. So I do have three floating groups on here, a top one, a bottom one, and I've got these other two here. And when I scroll up and down, you can see that they trigger at 150 pixels and they just change colors. Now I also have another floating group on here uh, in which this arrow here, when it hits a certain uh, level, It'll, sh it'll show, so hidden, now it's shown. When I click on it, it basically goes to the top of the page. So this is nice if you have really long pages uh, in your app, and when it gets to a certain point, you want to be able to have that up arrow there to bring it right back to the top for your users. Let's um, just jump into the design here real quick. Actually, one before we do that, I do want to show, so you'll see that this one here is uh, left just justified and this one here is right justified. So I'm just going to go and move my screen so you can see kind of the behavior for those floating groups like that, sliding it left and, and right like that. And then also, so this is a top floating group and this is a bottom floating group. So you can see how, how the behavior of those floating groups are. Now let's go into the design here so you can see how this is all set up. So again, I've got four floating groups, one, two, three, and then down at the bottom, I've got four. This here is just a, a simple shape. So you can just see that I'm moving the screen up and down or my cursor up and down. Um, now what we have here for this top floating group is I've got it set up so that it is vertically float relative to the top, okay? And this one down here at the bottom, I've got it so that it's relative to the bottom. And this is what basically allows you to go and when I move this, my screen up and down like that, the orientation or the position of this um, banner here, um, floating group will stay to, uh, relative to the bottom, and this one will remain fixed at the top. Now, we also have on here, we've got left and right, so this one here is right justified, and then the one at the top I have is set as left justified, and you could play around with your app to whatever uh, you want it to be left or right. And the others here, so this floating group here, it's basically, again, it's floating relative to the top, left justified, uh, floating above all elements as well. That's the default value, so that stays above all the other elements. Um, and I've got this text field here, actually the conditional here. So what I basically have is that when the scrolling position, uh, current page scrolling position is greater than 150 pixels, then just change the color. Now let me just show you how I got that. So current page scrolling position is current page scrolling position. So this is what you want to choose here. And then you can choose the value uh, greater than and then whatever you want it to be. So that's how you choose that. And then what I have on here for the text is the, the default value is below 150 pixels. And then similarly I have a a conditional on here so that when it's greater than 150 pixels I go and I just change the the text on that so basically again scroll down to the bottom current page scrolling position so on and so forth and then I went and I chose text and then you can change the value uh, of whatever the text you want it to be and likewise on this one I've got it so that when it's greater than 150 pixels, change the color to green. And similarly with a text, I just change it and say it's above 150 pixels, where the default is below 150 pixels. So it's pretty simple to, to set that up. Now I'm gonna go over here for a moment because I've got this floating group, group E. And this one here is for the up arrow. 
And basically it's set up as, uh, let's see, where are we here? Element is visible on page lo load. So I have that clicked off. The default is that it's on. I have it clicked off so that it is not visible when the page loads. And then when the, uh, again, current page scrolling position is greater than 250, I just arbitrarily picked 250, uh, sort of arbitrarily. I, I wanted it to be when the page was scrolled down towards the bottom. And so 250 pixels seems to work fine for that. And then I make it visible. And then I simply, inside the floating group, I put this icon. And then for the icon, when it's clicked, I basically just change the uh, element, so the flowing group, which is the name of this page here, and the offset pixels is zero. So that basically brings it right back to the top of the page. I also have a, when page is loaded, uh, scroll the, to uh, floating group, um, again, right to the top of the page. So then this way, um, when the page gets uh, refreshed, it always goes right to the top of the page. And then this chevron does the same thing thing. Uh, as I mentioned, this shape here, this is just, I threw a shape in just so you could see that it is, um, the screen is moving up and down, and I just stuck in a slider menu, which is a plug-in, uh, just so you could see um, that you could put a menu at the top. Uh, that is, is basically it. The one thing I also want to show you is on here, I've got this set up as uh, make this element fixed width. So it's not fixed width, but the page. So floating group, which is, again, the page. I do have this set up. And make this element fixed width. So right now that is clicked off. Okay. And I just want to show you some of the, the differences. So it's clicked off. Now I'm going to go and make this element fix width. So I'm going to make this page floating group, which is my page. I'm going to make it fix width. Okay. And we will refresh. All right. Now you can see that these, these floating groups cover the whole width uh, as they are also 960 pixels wide. My page is 960 pixels wide. Now what I want to do is I'm going to deselect it, okay, do a refresh, and you'll see that the top one is left justified and the bottom one is right justified. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top one here, and so this element is not checked for fixed width, which is good. I'm going to go over here to maximum width, percent of current page. And I'm going to change this to 200%, okay? And then what that's basically going to do is the width right now is 960 pixels wide. But what it's going to tell Bubble is that I can go a maximum of 200% of 960 pixels wide, which is almost 2,000 pixels. And when I do a refresh here, you'll see now that the bar, the floating group, is across the whole top of the screen. So that's just something to be aware of that you can go and you know, set these up in your app however you want the, the visual, the look and feel to be. And uh, you can set it again, apply a max width or not, and then fix it. Um, and similarly with the page, make this element fix width or not. And then you can see what the behavior is within your app. And you can adjust those, again, depending on the needs of your app. So scrolling up and down, and you can see this chevron, this up icon. You can see these are changing both the text below 150, color changes. And that's basically a couple of ways you can use the flow group in your app. It's very uh, nice and powerful uh, thing to do. I use them regularly in, in my, my apps, uh, especially for the header here um, and the title of my app and then a menu bar and so forth. I hope you had uh, enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you do like it, um, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate those. And if you have any 
questions or comments, please leave me a note below. I, I appreciate any feedback as well. If you um, want, you can subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I do have a couple of more that are in my queue to be created, and uh, those will be coming about shortly. So thank you again, and we will see you in the next video.